Hello and welcome to another Locked Owl tutorial video. My name is Michael and today we're going to go over how to design a base cabinet with Locked Owl Barb Channel Locks, E900BP. This tutorial is specific to those that don't have a budget for expensive CAD CAM programs. So while I'm using SOLIDWORKS, you can transfer my methodology into any CAD software you own. Here, in SOLIDWORKS, I have a 24 inch by 24 inch base cabinet. You can find drawings of a similar design on our website, right here. But for simplicity's sake, the one that I'm using does not have a built-in toe kick. We're going to be using machining information provided in the online catalog for the Barb Chan lock fastener to complete the cabinet. That information here is on our website in our online catalog on page 4 and 5. I will discuss the methodology behind the fastener locations that I use when designing pieces for customers. Firstly, you will notice that the construction of the carcass may be slightly different than what you normally see. Most notable is the full top panel. We have defined this as an important feature, mainly because of structural integrity of the end panels. Um, other than that, the remainder of the cabinet is pretty much standard. Now, the method I'm going to use today is what I like to call locked owl parametric. The reason I say that is because we will define two of three fasteners, and the third will be directly on center between those. Keep in mind that this construction method is also viable when using a 32 millimeter system. You just have to adjust the numbers so that the back fastener is not less than 32 millimeters from the back edge. Now, let's get started placing fasteners. So I'll select my top panel here. I'll edit my component. To make it easy, I'll select the right edge of the panel. I'll make an extruded cut and draw a center line. Now for three quarter inch panels, this center line is about 9.5 um, from the top edge. So we'll start drawing our circles for our fasteners. Each two holes represents one fastener. And those holes are spaced 32 millimeters on center apart from one another. So now that we have all of our fasteners, we're going to start locating them in relation to the front and back. So the front fastener, the first hole, is 20 millimeters from the front. The back fastener, the last most hole, is going to be 52 millimeters. Now this middle fastener, as you can see, as I'm placing my values, are kind of arbitrary. But we're going to make those even. And I think if I did my math correctly in my head, it's 208. So once we have that all set up, we'll exit our sketch. And we'll machine in 21 millimeters. Now, the shaft of the fastener is only 20 millimeters long but we added the extra one millimeter for clearance. It could be deeper, but not shallower than 21. And there we have it. We have our three fasteners here. So what I'll do is I'll take those machining operations, use my mirror tool on the central plane. This one's called the right plane, but you get the point, and I'll accept that. So now my machining that I had programmed is now transferred over to the opposite end. It's exactly identical. Now let's move to the deck panel. Let's go back on this side. Extruded cut. We'll draw our center line again. Now we're going to use the same methodology. We'll place our three fasteners. center line, make 
make all the holes equal size. Space them 32 millimeters apart. And then the hole diameter is going to be 8. Frontmost hole is 20 from the front edge. Backmost hole is going to be 52. And then again, the central fastener is going to be directly in the center. I'm going to make it 221. And that should give you fasteners for that. So now that we have those three hole or those three fasteners placed, we'll do like what we did with the top panel, and we will mirror on our right plane to get the machining on both sides. There we go. Okay, now it comes to our nailers. For our nailers. We have two different nailers. We have a bottom nailer and a top nailer, but the machining operations for both, while similar, are going to be slightly different. Let's start with the bottom nailer. We'll draw our center line. For nailers, our nailers are actually 104 millimeters long, slightly larger than four inches, um, but this is where you have to start thinking a little bit. And the reason why you have to start thinking is because you have to figure out which direction the nailer actually slides. So the bottom nailer is going to slide towards the deck panel. So the fastener is going to be closest to the deck panel. Whereas on the top nailer, the fastener is going to be closest to the top of the cabinet. So here we'll have 20 millimeters from the bottom. And that leaves you here. I'll show you 52. So that's why we do 104 instead of 101.6. I'll use my 21 millimeters deep. And I will mirror that over once again over the right panel of the panel. And then the next operation we're going to do it's going to be the spring pins. Now, the spring pins, they really true up the cabinet, aside from giving it extra shear support on certain panels. So we're going to do, since this is 24 wide, it's going to require three spring pins. The methodology for the spring pins is roughly the same as the channel locks. We're going to have two on the ends one directly in the center. And the spring pins are usually 52 millimeters from the edge. And the hole is still 8 millimeters deep for diameter. And we'll go ahead and for the spring pins we do 27 millimeters. The reasoning for that is that leaves about six millimeters of meat left in the deck panel once it's all drilled out. If you were to use a 5 eighths inch panel or 16 millimeters, um, it would be the same values. And that's the reason we wanted to stick with a, a constant number. Now let's go to the top panel, or the top nailer, I should say. Extruded cut. Like I said before, you have to kind of think. So the top nailer is going to slide upwards towards the top of the cabinet. So we're going to place our holes closer to the top. Space them 32. Might have to move this a little bit. Let's see. 20. And 8 millimeters diameter. So that's what that should look like. Go 21 millimeters in, and then we'll go ahead and we'll mirror that across. So there's that. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the top panel, spin it around so you can see the back, and I'm going to do my spring pinholes. Now, this particular feature trues up the cabinet, but it also makes the channel lock cap uh, fasteners permanent. You won't be able to unlock any of the panels once these spring pins are inserted, so just keep that in mind. So I'll go ahead and draw my center line. I will add my three. Spring pin holes, 52 millimeters from either side, and one directly in the middle with a diameter of 8 millimeters and 27 millimeters deep. Now that gives me my three spring pin holes in the top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go access my back panel and I'm going to find where my top panel is and the machining operation for those spring pins is right here. So the nice thing about SolidWorks and one of my favorite features is called convert entities. So I create a sketch on the back panel and I find my machining for my spring pins. And all I have to do is do convert entities and it gives me holes in the same location as my spring pin holes, but on the back panel. I could exit the sketch and these holes are going to go all the way through. I'm going to do the same for my top nailer. I'm going to make an extruded cut. I'm going to go find my sketch on my top panel for my spring pins. Convert entities. As you can see, I have fully defined holes. And I will go through those as well. Now you can see that my back nailer has the spring pin holes as well. So I think all that's left as far as the hole machining is the deck panel. And that is going to copy the machining from our bottom nailer. So go extruded cut. Find the machining for our bottom nailer. Convert entities. For this, I'm going to go down 13 millimeters because our spring pin is 40 millimeters long in total. It's going into the nailer 27, so the remainder is 13. The nice thing about this, though, is it doesn't need that extra tolerance. It's always going to fit. And there you go, you have the holes in your deck panel for your nailer. Perfect. Save that. Next we're going to go and do the corresponding machinery, the routing for the channel locks. And I'm going to do this by just drawing the basic geometry first the profile of the route, if you will. Um, and then I'll go ahead and place it in the different locations. So we'll select our end panel. Zoom in a little bit. Do an extruded cut. I'm just going to go and draw the simple profile of the slot. The overall length of the slot 64 millimeters. The overall length of this clean out section is 34 millimeters. This is 8 millimeters. This is also 8 millimeters. This is 5. To make things easier in the long run, I'm just going to go ahead 
and trim all these little loose ends up here. Do some extra dimensioning so that it will give me a defined sketch. That's what, that's really what we're looking for all the time in SolidWorks is a defined sketch. So theoretically, if I select this and copy it, I can drag this guy up, and once it turns black, it's defined. So we'll go over here, paste it, and we'll go ahead and place the last one. Now you'll notice that the locking section is in the front. This is our new construction method, so the locking section goes towards the front, so it locks closer to the front, so you're not going to get any gapping. You also have one here in the back, or will have one here in the back, so that will lock the back in the back of the cabinet. So come over here, and place these ones. that center point, drag it over. You'll see that it runs into the dado a little bit. That's quite all right. It's not going to affect the way that the cabinet goes together in the long run. Now we'll come up here, we'll paste our route. We're going to do the vertical ones now, so I'm just going to take that same profile, rotate it 90 degrees, Make vertical, and I'll go ahead and drag that one into place. Then I'll come up here to the top nailer, I'll go ahead and rotate this one, negative 90 degrees, and I'll make that completely vertical. Drag that guy over. And that is the placement of all of the routes in that single end panel. So go ahead and accept the sketch. The total depth is nine millimeters. Now it's okay to go a little bit deeper. We have a tolerance range of half a millimeter. So you can go from nine to 9.5. But this gives you the general shape of what the route looks like. So then we'll exit that component. And like I said, one of my favorite features of SolidWorks is the Convert Entities feature. So I'll go ahead here on my right end panel, make an extruded cut, and copy the geometry from the the last operation that we did, as you can see, converts all of my routes to the other end panel, and I'll go down nine millimeters deep. Close that up. Do a little nice isometric view right there. And there you have it. There is a locked owl channel lock base cabinet. Thank you for joining me. My name is Michael. You have a good rest of the day.